Chapter 6 Luke orchestrated a horse-drawn wagon ride up the trail where they would have a cookout and all but a few guests joined, leaving the big house and the surrounding area quiet. When it was like this, with the guests busy, Randall could imagine what his own place might look like someday. His own ranch would have people coming and going throughout the day, but none would stay more than a few hours at a time. He had to admit, for the last few months, the dream hadn't been as sweet. Though he liked his quiet, out there on his ranch would be too quiet, a little too solitary, even with the guests. It was the evenings. The silence aided him even now, and out there on his own ranch it would be so much worse. The stars twinkled overhead as he leaned with his arms propped against the fence, bracing one boot up on the bottom rail as he waited for Madison. She wasn't late, or he was pretty sure she wasn't. He didn't want to check his phone and ruin the tech-free serenity of the pasture. The glow of a smartphone just didn't compare to the glistening lights from the heavens. The scuff of feet on gravel behind him made him turn and a smile took over his whole face. He couldn't stop it. Madison steadily swayed his way. Even in the moonlight, he could see her long legs encased in very well-fitting jeans. She wore a slim, zip-front hoodie, and her hands were stuffed in her pockets. She always had a look about her that was so hesitant and vulnerable. He wanted to wrap his arms around her and tell her she had nothing to fear. Remember, Randall, she's a guest. She glanced up and caught his gaze, giving him a smile that made his chest tighten. Evening, he offered, as the wind blew her hair from her face. She looked like a model from a magazine, with her blowing curls and sweet smile. Madison stopped next to him and leaned up against the fence, brushing his arm with her elbow. Evening? What's your plan? I wasn't sure how to dress since you didn't mention what you wanted to do. I figured you wouldn't be much for going to a bar, so I chose comfortable. I hope it's okay. There was that worried look, like she'd suddenly realized her choice might be wrong or not good enough for him. You look amazing. It slipped out before he could think to hold it back. She flashed a quick smile, then ducked her head. What would he have to do to get her to stop doing that? If she would only look up eye to eye, he could certainly enjoy the view. I didn't have any sure plan except to spend some time with you. Now that he said it aloud, he realized how desperate it sounded. I mean... She laughed. Don't say any more. You don't have to qualify that. I don't usually like spending time with anyone but myself, but here I am. That must mean I want to spend time with you, too. Finally, someone who understood his trouble saying just what he meant and meaning everything he said. Men never had trouble with him, but women? Well, he had a short list of failed tries before he'd just given up. Those that lasted the longest were those who didn't want him to talk at all. Would Madison be the same? I guess we'll both have to think of something to do then. She cast her glance his way. I'm afraid I don't know much about the area. I literally found out I was coming here two days ago. I barely got packed in time to catch my plane. That gave him somewhere to start. He knew nothing about this woman. Where are you from? What do you do? She sighed and leaned harder against the rail. I'm not very interesting, I'm afraid. I'm one of the many librarians at a large library in New York. There, now you know where I'm from and what I do. She bit her lip. What was he missing? Something embarrassed her or made her nervous about telling him that little bit of information. Who wouldn't love meeting a pretty librarian? I'd always heard librarians were hot, but I'd never met one under the age of 60 until just now. He laughed, hoping to see her smile again. She chuckled slightly. I've also lived in Kansas, so I was surprised to hear you own land there. Now he was getting somewhere. Guessing Kansas isn't your happy place, not by the way you reacted. So we don't have to talk about my home again. It wasn't like she'd ever see it anyway. No sense in wrecking a perfectly good evening. It's both the place and the people. I still visit there once a year. My home is about 15 miles outside Little Springs. Where's your place? Her voice was so soft in the night, almost musical to his ears. My land isn't far from there. 
Guess there's always the chance that once you leave to go back for the big city, we still might run into each other. Though, if she was big city, he didn't stand a chance. Once she saw just how little he knew of the big city life and how little he wanted anything to do with it, she'd walk away. There's always that possibility. She smiled, her eyes drifting closed for a second. It's so quiet here. My mind almost doesn't know what to do with it. I had trouble sleeping without the noise of cars and airplanes. How do you do it? How do you deal with the wide open spaces? I'm so used to noise and people pressing in on me at all times. I hardly slept last night with the silence. She hid a yawn behind her hand. If she needed someone to press against, he'd gladly offer himself for the job. It didn't take but a moment to decide to do just that. He took two steps behind her and wrapped his arms around her tiny frame, gripping the fence in front of her. She leaned into him. Her soft hair rippled against his chin. Did he dare pull her close? She was so relaxed there. For a woman who didn't like people, she had no trouble with him, and that didn't bother him one bit. You're not near noisy enough, she laughed. I'm afraid I lost every single thought I had. He released his hold on the fence and wrapped it loosely over her stomach. She felt good in his arms, just the right height. I know one way that would give you a little noise and I could still stay just like this. If she agreed, it would make his night, maybe even his year. I'm listening. Her voice was small, uncertain. He hoped he wouldn't frighten away the tentative bond they'd forged. He released her and reached for her hand. Let's go visit the stable. Madison threw off her feeling of discomfort and disquiet as she followed Randall to the stable. There was no chance of being caught tonight since everyone was enjoying Luke's wagon ride. What did he want to do in the barn, though? Randall didn't seem like the few other guys she dated who'd been looking to take more than she was willing to give. But maybe he was, the ones who couldn't hold the conversation, knew they had you with one glance, and didn't care one bit that they'd move on in the morning. Randall stopped as he carefully pushed the large stable door wide. If he had anything in mind that involved intimacies, it would be awkward with the door wide open. And she wasn't about ready to jump in the hay with him, no matter how good he looked in jeans. She'd rather he stayed that way, in his fine-looking jeans. Randall flipped on an overhead light, bathing all the stalls in a dim glow. He turned to her. I don't think anyone will see you, but I can't saddle Maverick well in the dark. Can you sit in your chair for a minute in case anyone walks by? Wouldn't want them to see you. The side of his mouth quirked in a half smile that left her knees a little weak. She nodded and ducked into the empty stall where her chair waited. Randall cared about his horse. That was evident in the way he talked to Maverick as he put on the saddle blanket, then the saddle, careful everything sat just right. He cinched the girth strap and tied the latigo, then the chest strap. She'd seen it done hundreds of times, could probably do it in her sleep, yet his movements and muffled praise for Maverick were calming. She waited to see what mount he chose for her when he turned around and held out his hand to her. She held back. Should she tell him she was an accomplished rider? That she didn't need to ride with him because it was dark? That she could manage about anything in that stable, including Maverick? Or did she let him be the hero and wrap his arms around her and enjoy a scene from a story like the ones she wrote about? Well, not all that she wrote about. She stood and let her hands slip into his as he walked Maverick out into the dark. It's not too late, but the ride should be coming back soon. I didn't want Luke or Braden to catch us in the stable. Do you trust me? No, not yet, but she wanted to more than she'd ever wanted to trust any other man. She avoided his question and stepped forward instead. Mount on the left, you first. If you need help, I'm here to give you a boost. Would someone who didn't know about horses need a boost? Her mind whirled. Should she let him? It was so false, but she wouldn't question the night. She slid her boot into the stirrup and pushed off the ground, forgetting that Randall was inches taller than her. He slid his hands around her hips and guided her the rest of the way into the saddle, sending giddy grasshoppers jumping in her belly. Good. 
Slide forward a bit and I'll need the stirrup. Her foot wasn't in it anymore, but it was in the way. She scooted forward and held her legs out front as he reached in front of her and gripped the saddle next to her thigh. She held very still to avoid any more contact. She didn't need him thinking she wanted his touches or anything else, though his arms around her had been nice, welcome even. What was the Wyoming air doing to her? He slid his hands from near her thigh up to the pommel where the reins waited and unwound them, brushing lightly against her stomach. Could he feel all the fluttering in her belly? You can relax now, he whispered in her ear. If only it were that easy. She was too hypersensitive to where each and every body part was. And she was far too close to all of his. He tried again. You're going to give yourself a backache riding like that. He was right. It already hurt trying to shove herself as far into the pommel as she could. She tried to pretend that he wasn't there and to sit as she normally would on a horse, but even her rider's imagination couldn't manage it. He gently put his hand to her belly and pulled her back into his warm, welcoming, and oh-so-solid chest. That's better. His voice was rough, low, and it sent a thrill up her spine. Where are we going? Her voice was breathy. When had being in the company of anyone left her feeling anything other than drained? He was so different. His presence made her feel all sorts of good things, pleasant things, but not a single one of them was even close to tired. There's a spot I'd like to show you. He released her waist and directed Maverick down the driveway, away from the ranch. She hadn't ridden in five years, but it all came back. There had been a certain freedom in it, and being with Randall made it all the more so. Without stirrups to help with proper seating, she was at the mercy of the horse, but Randall kept his arms right at her sides, stopping any fear she had of falling. They rode along a path that either Randall or Maverick knew. She could make it out in the dark if she squinted. Since she wasn't controlling the horse and had no idea where he planned to take them, it made no sense to worry. He veered Maverick off to the left and down into a ditch, then up on the other side. Maverick rocked under her, but Randall's solid arms kept her from slipping in the slightest. His breath on the back of her neck did wonderful swirly things to her insides that no other date had managed, not even prom years before. Had she always been so quiet, so hesitant to let people in? She'd had good friendships in school and even in college, but living in New York had changed everything. The little girl from Kansas hadn't fit in anywhere in New York. Everywhere she went was a new challenge, and even her apartment— the closest thing to solitude she could afford still wasn't private. Her neighbors stayed up all night, blaring music, dancing, slamming doors, and fighting. Taxis honked and airplanes flew over at all hours. She'd used a fan at first, but it hadn't helped. Here, it was so peaceful, just like home in Kansas. If only she could go back. Randall reined in and wrapped one arm around her waist again just briefly, enough to make her want more, before his hand slid down to the saddle and he dismounted, leaving her alone on the huge horse with no way to reach the stirrup. Just swing your leg over and I'll lift you down. You're no bigger than a mite. Well, maybe compared to him she wasn't, but by any other standard she was average. She gripped the gullet of the saddle, careful not to put too much pressure on the pommel, and swung her leg over so she was sitting with both legs dangling. Randall stepped forward and slid his hands up her thighs to her waist and lifted her down. When her feet found solid ground, he held her for just a moment as he gazed down at her in the moonlight. Her first instinct was to pull up her hood and cover her face. As if he knew what she was thinking, he reached up and brushed her hair behind her ear. His gaze held hers, and though she knew what her heroines would do, she had no idea what she herself should. They would take the opportunity. It was ripe for a kiss. Then he stepped away from her, and his hat brim plunged his face completely into darkness as he turned from the moonlight. He led Maverick further along the trail, and she followed. It seemed odd that he would stop the ride when they had so far to walk, but the stones all around would be hard to navigate if he couldn't see over her shoulder. He ground-tied Maverick and reached for her hand. It seemed so odd, 
so high school to want to hold his hand, but she did. He led her to a river that was much wider than the creek behind the ranch house. This one bubbled over rocks and there was a pleasant area with sparse grass before it turned to all rocks on the shore. Randall stretched out his legs as he sat, leaning back against his hands. He was so comfortable in his own skin, so sure of himself. Would she ever feel that way? Would she ever be able to hold a smile when someone looked at her or build the confidence she needed? Madison moved next to him and took her place, curling her own legs in front of her and wrapping her arms around them. You aren't fooling me, Randall. This is a kissing spot. She arched her eyebrow to let him know there would be none of that. Though part of her wished he'd at least try. No one else ever had, except Tommy Davis at the prom, and he'd been drunk off spirit someone had sneaked in, so it didn't count. He'd been so plunged that he'd have kissed a mule if one had been willing. Busted, this is a kissing spot, but I didn't bring you here to take advantage, I just like it. It's peaceful. A man can think here, so I figured a woman could too, and I wanted to ride with you. He wasn't even going to try. That took her mood from kite soaring to kite crashing in seconds. I've been thinking all day. I got my puzzle taken care of in the stable earlier, remember? If she reminded him she was out here to see him, perhaps he would see her as an actual woman, not just a thinking partner. I do remember. I'm going to have to let Luke and Braden know you might be slipping in every once in a while. With them, honesty is always the best policy. Luke scares me to pieces. She had to be honest. The man's size alone left her knees quaking. He's nothing to worry about. He'd never hurt a fly. Plus, Mrs. Alice would whip him if he was ever rude, so you know you're safe. She nodded, drawing her legs closer to her. She dodged out of the cabin in time to miss Maisie and Annabelle heading to Shady for their partying. This was much more her speed, but it also left her wanting. Wanting his arms around her again, and his lips on hers. If she hadn't said anything, would he have acted on his kissing spot? Had she ruined it for herself? What else do you usually do when you're out here? She whispered, her knees blotting out most of her voice. Well, kissing. He laughed and she wanted to run at the admission. I'm just teasing. And she could tell from his tipped head and nervous laugh that he meant it. Me and most girls can't seem to find much in common. I come out here to remember what silence is, what home is, and who my creator is. The stars are pretty amazing out here away from all the lights of the ranch. He gazed up and leaned further back on his elbows. His creator? Was Randall a Christian too? Was that why he hadn't kissed her? Christians didn't kiss, but he'd sure held her close in that saddle. It had evoked all sorts of sweet feelings that were far warmer than her chilly parents. I think I'm ready to go back whenever you are. She swallowed hard. Why did all the people she wanted to be around have to be Christians? Her parents, Danica, and now Randall? She'd considered sharing her secret with him, but if he judged her, she'd have to keep away from him, too.